<laughs> right guys, so we are back, it's turned out to be a beautiful weekend at the Bushcraft Show 2018, absolutely stunning. So we've been at the main aspect of it today, Ed Stafford was there giving a talk on his Amazon adventures. We had a couple of pints of lager, had a walk around and uh, someone spotted sparkles which was really nice for, for that gentleman to come over and say hello. So uh, yeah, big shout out to you, I thought we didn't get a chance to have a conversation buddy if you're watching this, if you know, if we're lucky enough uh, we'll try and catch you later. Uh, anyway, some great people here, really is. Anyways, so, oh, let me show you my new kit. I seen a buddy of mine from Ammonite Knives, met him here last year as it happens, just walked along the road and uh, we got talking, turns out he's a knife maker and oh, I've been after one of these off him for ages it's a beautiful piece this guy's, yeah I'll check it out he's all his own leather work as well it's a beautiful, I mean look how sexy that is it's a beautiful little knife just, I, you know, I've got a, you know, a, a regular sized bushcraft blade, but this is just one of those little things just to have with you, just for those little jobs, jobs such as, you know, just a little bit of notch work. Found that someone dropped it, um, but I thought that's a really good fucking pot holder. Excuse my language. Uh, tie a bit of string around that. You get yourself a nice little pot holder there. So I've made a notch for it. I think that's going to turn out to be quite good. It will be very important just to extend the ember. <laughs> and I also copped for a uh, cocking, well, you know, a squiddle, as it's called. Basically, uh, is what this is, it's just a, an iron rod that goes in the ground and then these other attachments slide over the rod and, you, and it basically, so you can hang pots or your pans over the fire. Really good bit of kit, it's, it is heavy, you know, it's iron. But, it's not as heavy as I thought it was going to be. This one is made by the guys at TGM Products, Metalworks. Um, they go on to say, it's by a skilled craftsman using modern and traditional techniques and they're built to last. They have a cut above anything else you can buy on the market today. Well, that's what they reckon, but um, I really liked it. I saw, them, I saw it in use earlier, you know, as a set up, and I just thought it was perfect for us. <coughs> Hey, old Charlie, hi. We've made a little uh, modification to our tent area. We just I got a really cheap tarp, so we've put up a little tarp here, put a bit of shade. Because <coughs> I think it's going to be a bit of a scotch of a weekend. Uh, we've not took it all the way to the bottom, you know, to let the draft through and, and the ventilation through. And Spackle's not actually sat in here with us. She's sat in some of the shade it's casting. And um, it's over now, what's it? So, you know, if it was raining or whatever, is we can still kind of 
get in here relatively dry and cook out here and go back in there all that sort of stuff so it should be quite usable guys so so I put the fro on the log through the middle you can grab that you can do the hard work yeah right when I nod my head you hit it that's good good lad there we go, that'll do, that'll do, that'll do. Once we've knocked this in, we can use the fro as a lever to split the water. Okay, you split it too nicely. Alright. All right. Um, what else have we buy, Bender? We also brought, bought some uh, apple jack. Oh yeah, have we got one there? We also bought these, this is amazing guys. I was going to make these myself with my sewing machine but it's this 13 pounds 50 but because we bought two he said just give us 20 quid anyway Brandon will you take the camera yep. so oh, oh, hopefully you can hear me and see me what is it it's a seat basically opens up Packs down to nothing, no, weighs nothing. It's a bushcraft seat. Really sturdy though. Basically, what you do, you find three bits of wood in the woods, cut them to the length that you want. You then, rather than lash the bottom, because it comes with this, tie that around the, the middle of the, the legs splay them open put the ends in that instant stool i've been after something like this for like i said i was gonna make me own there's a guy on the internet called far north far northwest bushcraft and survival old fella who uh, lives up in alaska he he shown one on his video about how, how to sew one up and you know do, do your own but for tenor i was like nah i'll just uh how it go together <laughs> Yeah, boom, done. Simple as that. I mean, how many times have we been going around the woods and think, you know, I don't like a bit to sit down. You know, if it's a bit damp and that on the floor, then yeah. you want to get your brew on. Just get yourself a little stool, done. That's always going to be in my day packs now, always. Yeah. So easy, so usable. These these were made by a, um, I think they were Scandinavian. Oh. Czech Republic. They're called Jubo. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll let you, I'll give you a bit of a zoom in. It says made in Czech Republic. Um, anyway, yeah, I was really happy with that. Boom. Right, guys, that's pretty much it for now. Uh, we'll probably, oh, bumped into a mate of mine from work that I've not seen for about five years. Honestly, it's a, not only that, we sat down having a pint. Someone walked over and said, "Do you work? In, are you do you work in Santander? To, to the missus? <laughs> How random is that? <laughs> Talk about a small world." So Brandy got recognised uh, for working in the bank. Sparkle got recognised for being on this channel. Um, well, I don't, I've not been recognised. So, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, my mate from work. Wonder where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you all in a bit. See that hat he's wearing, mate? That is the kind of hat that I am talking about. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to say something. Yeah, you're doing it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, hi, again. Uh, we're still at the Bushcraft Show. It's day two. Saturday. Saturday evening? Yeah. Yeah, Saturday evening. What first date to be precise? Um, we're just getting a quick snack on us before we go up to the the party area, the party zone. <laughs> the party <laughs> zone. <laughs> yeah, it's where they're from raised with a load of knives strapped to them and cooks us. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, so we, as Neil told you earlier, we've got a few new little pieces. So we just thought we'd show you this. Neil's been after one of these things for ages and thinks they'll be ideal for wild camping, which I agree. They're a bit weighty, 
Um, well, so camping when you don't have to too far to walk. Yeah, but, which is okay. Properly wild camping, yeah. We've cracked up in a beer as well. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you show them, Neil? What we've got here. Right. Yeah, go. So it's a three, sort of three... You might have to speak up. Right, so there's some books there. And we've got, a, we've got uh, what's a pot holder. We've got the grill sat on top of it and we're having our, our favourite shawarmas, as you know. Um, it just it just stakes into the ground, really. Um, but it's quite handy because you can move things quite easily. Do you want to demonstrate how easy it is to move? All right. So, you can keep your water warm or do it on a slow boil. Or if you want to, you know, Increase it. Boom. Get it down there. Just angle it slightly up or down and I think it's up and then it will allow you to sort of move it. And then you know if you just want to completely take it out the picture. Yeah. Just move it out of the way. So it's an absolute godsend. Yeah. So there's a it's by a specific company. Um but I don't There's feel loads of makers of these. Yeah. But we spent more. seventy quid on this? Yeah, we bought it for seventy. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I wanted it because of the, it had the two hooks and also the one for the tray. Yeah. And that will actually come out as well, the trivet. Yeah. Um, which yeah. gives it a bit more usability as well. But Probably won't know, be able to like see this, that. How cool is it? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, babes. Chicken schwab, that side is done. On the side too. Yeah, so uh, we'll we'll come back to you when, awesome. when we're Love ready it. to show you some of our other stuff. So we've got some, I, you know, those folding chairs. We'll maybe get some sticks out and show you just how easy it is to work something up like that. In fact, I'm going to put this down just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit closer. <laughs> All right. right, enough singing. Right. <laughs> Buckle. Come on, girl. Right guys, it is, what day is it? Day three? Day three, it's going to be our last day. Oop, it's going down the, the hill of doom. Uh, yeah, so, God's back up. Uh, day three, last day at the Bushcraft Show. Uh, and tonight, we've got to stay for one more night. And uh, I'll just bring you into our camp area. We had the mother of all thunderstorms last night. We knew it was coming, so we quickly got all the gear in, but the, the, the lightning show, oh my lord. Was it good, wasn't it babe? The yeah. lightning. And then, oh, hang on, I'm just gonna take a little pew. And then, uh, so we, we got in the tent. I mean, I, we couldn't hear no thunder. But like, the lighting looked like it was right over us. It's weird. Anyway, lighting, like it was just non stop. And all of a sudden, I mean, we was in the tent by this stage, batting down the hatches, because we knew, obviously, we knew it was on its way. And then, oh my god, the rainfall. I've never heard anything like it, honestly. It was thunder in the tent. Anyway, the tent did really well for an ultralight tent. It was not a drop of water got through, not a drop, did it? Absolutely mega. Anyway, so if you're wondering why Brandy's preoccupied though, it's, um, she's peeling the eggs. So we have, so, so we have a staple breakfast when we come and do these things. Um, they just keep it simple and tasty. Sausages, cheesy beans, eggs. And it's what we do, we boil the eggs in the same water that we then make a brew out of. Yeah. So it's easy peasy lemon squeezer. Anyway, so I'll show you. I've done a little modification. With that cheap grill that I've got, actually slides underneath like this trivet that this piece of kit comes with. And it makes it absolutely rock solid. Uh, I wish I'd thought of that last night when we were making our shawarmas. Um, <laughs> so I was a bit worried that I'd drop the shawarmas off the grill, or with it being balanced. Anyway. It's absolutely mega. So guys, that's it. I mean, that's how, how we camp there. Okay, folks, so... Brandon's off to the ablutions. 
<coughs> so I've got this nice big log here. Really nice thickness. Spackle, don't go wandering. Come here. Come on, girl. And um, it's what, it's what I thought I'd do is just lo lob a bit off the end. Spackle. It's not making it easy, is she? Come here. C good girl. Um, and then split it and then do a Swedish fire torch. But once I split it, I might even do the Swedish fire torch with rocket stove. Trans me arm at it. I don't know. Let's see how it goes step by step. So, step one. We are just gonna. I've only got my lap lander. I was I wanted to do this yesterday and I thought, God, I could really do me buying a silky for this. <coughs> but you know what? I'm gonna persevere and just use my lap lander. Because <laughs> I'm tight. Right, folks. So. Just to show you what we've done, we have cut a segment off using the lap lander, and I think it will just be big enough for what we want to do. It's, it's to be honest, it's not, it's not really big enough, but you know, in girth. Uh, but I think it'll do as a demo. Of course, I didn't cut that, and that was already we ever cut the tree down in the first place. So that's at an angle. But we'll, you know, again, we'll try and live with it the uh, best we can. So now, it's a case of just marking up where where you want it to uh, to split it. So I just thought of a little cheeky idea. That's what I did. I just sharpened this up. I'm going to make a bushcraft pencil. <laughs> oh God. Anyway. Okay. So. <laughs> Little bushcraft pencil here. Let's see if this works. Oh yeah. A little bit. Get a bit more ink. Or graphite, as it's a pencil. All right. So we've marked our splicing lines with what might be a YouTube first, the Bushcraft Pencil. <laughs> oh, but we are full of it, yeah, it's true. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and split that now. Uh, to split it, guys, this is a real great axe. You know what F1 goes on about, you know, hold, holters or whatever they're called and, you know, proper axes and all that. This is a peach. Um, just that for me. Yeah, it's made by Schrader. The only thing is with this, I think I think it's made out of uh, steel, or some kind of. Like, sorry, what's it called? Like titanium or something. No, no. It's basically it's just very hard to sharpen, but it stays sharp for ages. Okay. Uh, it's what's great about it as well. It's not only is it a great splitter. But it's great for using it as a baton as well. Really handy that. Because it's textured as well, it doesn't slip off when you're hitting wood in the ground. I use this all the time, guys, it's absolutely brilliant. And uh, it's also got a ferro rod at the bottom, which is alright, that's a bit of a gimmick, but you know, as my old mate Jab says, at a pinch, you could uh, use it to, to get a fire going. Uh, people will say, oh, you shouldn't use a blade. Listen, that blade is so hard. That is so soft. It ain't touching it. But you could probably... I don't know, does it work on the other side? No. Uh, but, uh, to be honest with you, I think that would be a bit dangerous as well. The idea is... Okay. That ain't touching that, I'm telling you. So don't get in a panic about it. Plus, you'd only use it in dying need. Yeah. Anyway, so... Uh, so is what we'll do now. We shall attempt to split. Uh, had it been a lot easier. Okay. So that's one split. <coughs> oh, top little tip here. That line going down the middle there is actually the middle of the tree. 
that's the original middle of the tree. Now if you look, when you split a trunk like that in half, you'll see that one side is thicker than the other. Basically, the smaller side is the north and the thicker side, the thicker side is the south due to the, the sun, the sunlight. The tree has naturally grown stronger on the south side because what happens is when the tree gets, you know, with its branches, the branches on this side of the tree come outwards and the branches on the north side of the tree go upwards. So to support the weight of that, it becomes stronger that side. Now, guys, I learned that here. Uh, from one of the uh, from one of the guys who, who who showed you how to work with wood in, in the old in the old ways, and uh, fantastic! I didn't know that, so hopefully that's you know shared the knowledge on a little bit more. Uh, you might be wondering why I've marked these up, it's so that when it goes back together again, it goes back together again easy. So you know it's one, two, three, four going round in. I do it so it's going round in the clockwise direction that way, and remember what was what the numbers what. Okay, so we can either go two ways with this, we can either just dress it up now as a box standard Swedish torch, or we can try a new skill out that I saw yesterday, and that was basically turn it into a rocket stove. It's the same principle as a Swedish torch, but you, you, you make um, <coughs> basically out of two of your pieces here. Let's have a think about this now. So I didn't actually see him do the first bit. Basically, you've got <coughs> to put out two areas here, which makes a hole here, which then feeds up the fire. Oh, should we go for that? We could try it, couldn't we? The, sweet, the rocket, Swedish rocket stove method. <coughs> can yeah, we can do. See, this is where you, you mark these things up. There we go. Makes it a lot easier to, to line it all up again. Okay, we could do, I've got a couple of knots there though, but I might do a small <coughs> version of it where I just take a little bit out of each one, uh, not the big hole like the guy made. Yeah. But of course, I'm just using a lap lander here, guys, so I'll say just. But it does affect, affect it. So we're gonna go for it. And I'll bring you back once I've made the little holes. I marked it using my bushcraft pencil. Uh, I'm going to say that until it sticks. <laughs> until it becomes a thing. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I've made two lines. Bear in mind, whatever you do here, and, and then the opposite one, which I'll show you in a minute. So it's going to be like that again. So you don't have to go too deep. Otherwise, your holes will be massive. I, I actually think I probably made it too deep. We'll see. So here's one I've already just done. So Brandy said, well, how are you going to get that bit out? Well, so far all I've used is an axe for splitting, the lap lander for cutting, and this is where the old, this is where your bush, you know, your knife comes into play now. So just using it. Try always get a full tang knife if you can guys or use um, a cheap mortar because if you're going to fuck up a knife, fuck up a mortar. <laughs> That's a new slogan I, I developed before. For <laughs> so roughly in line with, with your two areas there, put it in the middle. You can use what, one of your bits of wood if you want <clears> of <throat> the hitting device. You don't have to go hard on this. Putting the blade up on the other side. Let's have a quick look, see where we're up to. Do we say on the other side? I didn't actually cut this one too square, so there you go. Take a little nibble out of that bit there. So 
So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I might just give it a little bit of a shave in that bottom bit there. Okay, happy with that. Once you've finished with your knife, guys, this is more for people who are just watching out of interest, but always, always put it away. And the same goes with your axe as well, which shows a naughty boy there, not putting it away. I like a nice, a new sheet for that, really. This is one it comes with, and it's not the best. It's not, it's not bad, though. Anyway. So you got your two pieces now. Uh, one and I've, I did mine on one and two. And as you can see, when that's going to go together, that was a little bit off actually, isn't it? But you know, there you go. So when you put it together, you've got your hole there now for the rocket stove aspect. So all we need to do now, and because it's cut at an angle. I'm probably just going to sink it into the earth a little bit, mm. this one, when I put it together. But when you put it together guys, just, you leave a little bit of a gap and you just put some of your natural tinders in there. Uh, also it's good just to get your axe and just rough up the edges a bit. Which is, oh, this is what I'll do. And then shove your little bit of tinder in there, light it from here, whoosh, and it'll go for a treat. So we'll do that, <coughs> we'll get it going. Are you ready for another coffee anyway? Yeah. All right, so we won't waste this, we'll actually use this in, in anger. <coughs> and uh, we'll get ourselves a brew on with it. So I'll be back in a minute, guys, once I've just finished this. It's yeah. a bit tricky to hide. Okay guys, so we've put a bit of tinder in there um, and then we've lit it. Alright, I can't see how this is. I'll put some more shavings in because we was finding it a little bit of a, a tricky one to get going. So I've put some wood shavings in here. Well, let's just see what happens now. Yeah. <laughs> Howdy folks. Well, we're packing up now. It's the end of, so what was that, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, morning. yeah, and it's now Monday morning. So yeah, oh it was good, it was a really good show. But, uh, you know what, I can't say I didn't enjoy one bit of it, I thought it was just brilliant this year. We had different weather patterns, lightning, thunder, scorching heat, again it's beautiful again today. Killer to break camp when it's, when it's this hot. And humid. <laughs> Sweaty. Yeah. Anyway, um, so that's us. Yeah. So um, just out of interest, guys. I know are you you guys a lot, but um, quite a popular YouTuber, TA Outdoors, is in. Did I want the orange glamping tent? Oh, the green one was it? Yeah, yeah. he was in there, um, and it was one of those. We had a couple more people staying here as well so uh, yeah you know if you come to these shows and these these guys are your heroes then you know you check them famous. check them out you know lofty was about quite a lot dave canterbury was about again today ed stafford was roaming, roaming around stop and say hello so you know um anyway yeah so as always guys it's the usual thing of lnt what that sound for Leave no trace. <laughs> uh, yeah, can't wait for next year. We're gonna do it again. Might do Edale next year. Not sure yet. Depends if it's the same weekend. You start meeting the same people there year after year. It's kind of cool, you know. Uh, anyway, next year we might be buying a a, 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 a teepee tent for next year. Not anything as luxurious as that, of course, with the carpets and God knows what else and the butler service. Uh, but just something with a little bit more room because these events that you're here for a few days um, and you're wanting to practice with your kit and bring everything and have a good play you need a bit more room than than what we do normally which is a bit of a hike in a wild camp where it's about trying to minimise what you take 
we'll see. Anyway, guys, oh, this is the reason why I came to do this talk. Not only, not only is it the outro, but um, the results of that Swedish fire torch. I didn't film it because it turned out that slice of wood that because I, I got that wood off the floor and uh, it was soaked all the way through. So I managed to get it going on the inside, but it wasn't taking well, it wasn't a good demo. So I ended up throwing it on the fire, on a really hot fire, and it still didn't burn for ages. So yeah, I was always up against it with that one. But the, the, the theory was right and it, it was all there. And as damp as it was, it gave it a good go. It just shows you just how great channeling the heat works actually. But um, anyway, we'll try it again. <laughs> it's good practice. And uh, so guys, yeah, we're pretty much loaded up now. This is all what we've got, all packed up into a couple of extra bits that I bought as well. So hopefully guys, you've enjoyed this video. This has been the Bushcraft Show 2018. We're not sponsored by him, <laughs> but we really recommend coming. Just don't think of it as, you know, well, it's not, you know, it, it is a bit commercial and all that. But when you're in these woods, there's nothing commercial about it. It's just you in the woods with a fire, mm. eating like you would anywhere else. So we're uh, with lots of great people. About that's the bit I like about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, folks. See you later, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>